3D printed miniatures, 3D printed terrain, and a 3D printed helmet are all somehow going to get combined to make one epic diorama. And if we're going to do this, we're going to need a new badass machine. And that's what we got here. The Frozen Sonic Muddy 4K. The Frozen Muddy Sonic 4K is a pretty sweet machine. It's got a 2.8 inch touchscreen panel, 9.3 inch 4K model LCD screen. Its maximum print speed is 80 millimeters per hour, and the print volume is 20 by 12.5 by 22 centimeters. This is an absolute piece of a printer. If I'm going to depict a war in the grim darkness of the far future, I'm going to need some futuristic troops, and Print Minis has the perfect ones. I loaded in some Aqua Gray 4K resin because this is very easy to clean and produces some highly detailed miniatures. I sliced everything up in Chi 2 Box Pro. Here are my settings. And then my first print was full of perfectly printed troopers. I washed them in alcohol for about six minutes. Three minutes under the UV light cures these up nicely and I have a whole bunch of awesome prints here. Now basically what I was trying to do here was reproduce the entire box set from Cadia Stands from Games Workshop. But I also printed this great big tank because hey man, tanks are awesome and the frozen printer handled this thing perfectly. Running a YouTube channel is a lot of work, but watching that subscriber camp grow and the facility get bigger makes it all worthwhile. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button because I've got some absolutely mind-blowing builds planned and you're not gonna wanna miss them. Print Minis also has this really cool futuristic walker, so I went ahead and scaled it down to 60% and printed it. Then it was time to assemble the thing. Finally, some heavy weapon platforms. I went ahead and made two of these things, a howitzer gun and some rocket launchers. So finally, the next thing to do was to go ahead and slap chop paint them. I'm interested to see how this whole slap chop method goes on the rest of these guys because I've never really done it before. So I can't wait to get some paint on these things, so let's just get at it. Then it was time to layer up the uniforms. Picked out all the armor plates with the Dark Angels green I decided on. Black Templar for the guns, belts, pouches, and a bunch of other details. Next, some cold steel to pick out some of the other details. Then I dry brush some damage and metal chips in the armor. Sleeping sack with some bone and sapia. and the gold details with some gold and sapia as well. I printed these buildings on my FDM printer and these were really cool files that I got for free on Thingiverse. Then I went ahead and printed the floor separately and piece the buildings together.
Then it was time for a quick paint job. I primed these things in some flat black. I then based them in some Rust-Oleum truck bed coating and this helped to hide all those layer lines. Then using a downward motion, I sprayed some metallics onto the buildings. I did one in gold, and I did one in hammered bronze. With a little bit of Deco Art Silver, I gave them a quick dry brush. And just like that, I had a couple of cool old ruined buildings to add to this future build. Then, I busted out my Otour Laser Master 3 and decided to change the pace and laser cut some terrain. So I went ahead and got this bridge, cut it out, and put it together. Really cool. Next up, same type of paint job, truck bed liner, followed by a little dry brush. I really had my heart set on having a full-size Imperial Guard helmet to add to this diorama. Now, I know it's going to be a bit odd, but I think it's just going to be something very unique for this project, and I want to show you how I went ahead and built that helmet. I opened up Blender, pulled in some reference images, and really pushed my Blender skills to the limit modeling this helmet. Basically, I used things like Boolean modifiers, as well as extrusions and scaling of faces to basically try to make the shape of this helmet. And this took me well over a week. I found this insignia online and made sure to add it to the helmet. Now, because this thing was so big, I had to split it into four parts in order for it to fit on my printer. So that's what I did. I went ahead and printed this off in four separate prints using some ceramic filament. And once this thing was ready to go, I used some two-part epoxy to glue it together. And then cross my fingers that once all four of these sections go together, it's actually going to fit on my head. So what I figured was gonna take a few minutes end up taking me like an hour. Let me know in the comments if you know any epoxies or glues that act a little bit faster to try to help speed this process up for next time. Thanks guys. I also tried to fill in some of the cracks with this glue. It's been drying for a few hours, so now comes the moment of truth. Will this fit on my head or not? But I'm thinking it will. Ah. It's pretty cool. There's something amazing about creating something in a digital space and just seeing it come out in the real world. But stick around because we're going to paint this bad boy up and put the final touches on it. We got some primer, some hammered bronze, and some colored spray. I sanded this thing down and the painting process was going to be really simple. First, I primed it black in my airbrush booth. But the airbrush booth was a little small for this, so then I pulled it out of there and the next step was some hammered copper. Now this is a textured spray paint and it helps to hide those layer lines. Then I hit it with some Hunt Club Green. But this thing was looking a little too monochromatic and a little too shiny. So I decided to go in with my airbrush using some Army Painter Air Paints on Forgiven Green, add some shadows and just kind of give it a light dusting all over and it dulled down that shine and added some nice contrast to the build. Don't do this, I used electrical tape as masking tape because I had nothing else and I was in a pitch, but it left some bad residue 
Luckily, I hit it when I dry brushed some cold steel from Formula P3 on top of it. Vallejo Old Gold is definitely my favorite gold color. And I hit the insignia with it, followed by a nice heavy coat of sapia wash. Then using a sponge, I dabbed on some paint chips and scratches using cold steel again. So this was my first attempt at designing my own cosplay prop, basically. I did a little designing in the past, but nothing that I had to like wear and nothing at this scale. So even though I made some mistakes, I'm happy with it. I will be adding this file to my Patreon and all these names flying across the screen here are members of my Patreon. They really make this channel worthwhile. I gotta thank all you guys. If you're interested in any of that stuff, I'll link it in the description below. Now my favorite part, I get to build the futuristic war-torn landscape. I mounted some SM foam onto a piece of MDF board, messed up a little bit here. Had to cut that piece off and glue it on the other side. Then, through about an hour long process, I tried to figure out how in the world I was going to mount all this stuff together. Then I ended up with this and I was pretty happy with it for the most part. I added some cork board underneath to work as pavement. Then cut everything to fit. I traced it where I wanted everybody to go and I thought I had this brilliant idea that I would measure the cork board, take a picture of it, load it in the light burn, trace out the circles using the light burn software, delete the picture and then basically laser cut perfect holes into this cork board and use it as a base. But what I didn't know is that cork is really hard to laser cut. I just kept burning it into ashes and not penetrating like I thought I would. So at the end of the day, it was pretty much a fail. I went ahead and popped them out the best I could and continued on anyway. Next up, I used some white glue and just glued this right to the SM foam. Then I wanted to make some like jagged looking earth. So using a combination of my knife along with my blowtorch, I went ahead and hacked at this thing. just repeating the blowtorch knife method until I had something that I was happy with. Then I decided to make a little crater just for fun. Just like that, battle damage. I didn't want this pavement to be too like uh, neat looking so I went ahead and scratched it all up with my knife and just for fun I decided to add a little sewer pipe here so I cut up a Crayola marker and fun fact this was apparently a sniffable marker and it smelled like somebody else's cheese yup nacho cheese so this rest of this build smelled like nacho cheese until I got that little marker thing painted. Quick priming, then some dry brushing. And then the earth tones really started to come to life.
Now, a big, big help to the channel are my sponsors, and I'm really excited because I have a new sponsor, Into the AN. They make some awesome graphic t-shirts, and I really want to tell you all about it. So here we go. When I first seen these graphic tees from Into the AM, I thought they were so cool and really vibe with my creative side that I like to showcase here at Facility D20, so it's been really cool to have them as a sponsor. I picked out a few of my personal favorite shirts, but there are so many more awesome designs on their website that you need to go check out. So click the link in my description and get 10% off these premium made tees. They also have package deals where you can get 3 graphic tees for $60 or 3 basic tees for $49.95. I've been wearing these for a while now and the prints are bright and sharp and the shirts are super soft, hang just right and you can truly feel the quality. Into the AM also has a lot of bundle packs for extra savings as well, which is always awesome. Follow the link below and check them out. After months and months of work, I finally got everything. The miniatures, the terrain, the helmet and the display based on. Now, this isn't exactly like I had in my mind, but I'm excited to put it together because this is Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff. If you like this build, I got some pretty cool ones linked right here. Go ahead, check them out, and hang out in the facility with me for a little bit longer.